Five. Get ready to laugh with Joe Brano, Kieran Deal, Paul Odo, Yanis Pappas. This week's host, Kim Cole. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Kim Cole! Love. I love the love that I get in New York. Y'all know I'm from New York, right? I'm from Brooklyn. What up, Brooklyn? What up? What up? Yeah, I'm, back when Brooklyn was a whole lot more fun. It's all fancy now. I liked it when it was a little dangerous. I loved it. I, I, I love New York and I miss, I live in LA for the last 25 years. I miss Puerto Ricans. I do. We don't have Puerto Ricans. They haven't come quite that far. I miss them, the energy, the Puerto Ricans and the Dominicans, which are the same thing to me, but don't tell them that. They get very upset. Are you Dominican, ma'am? No. <laughs> are you Puerto Rican? Neither. You neither. Okay, good. I was about to get stabbed. So, no, 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 no. And here's the thing. I had a Puerto Rican driving instructor. You know, when I was 28, I learned how to drive. And she had this energy. Like, she didn't understand what all, the, all these numbers, all these numbers and all these letters. Get in the car. Get in the car. Shut up. Get in the car. Okay, you see this P? That P is for parking. Okay? Okay. You see the D? The D, that is for driving. Okay? But every time I put the car into aura, it goes back that way. How come that's not a B? I put it back. It should be back that way. B. You don't get your head. <laughs> Driving and phonetics at the same time. Reading is fundamental. Uh, I, I, listen, I, I love to tell people my age. My true age is 52 and three quarters. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to lock my knee back into place now. Okay. It changes. It's going to change, you guys. It's going to change. I like to test, test the audience. So what ages are we? Where are my 20 year olds? 20 year olds? Yes. 20 is good. 20 is good because you don't know that you don't know. It's great. It's great. Where are my 30 year olds? 30 year olds? Ah, yes. 30 is good because now you know what you didn't know. Where are my 40 year olds? 40. Woo! 40 is wonderful because now you know and you let everyone know that you know. Anybody 50 and up? Phew, phew. Come on, let's represent. Hello. He was like, yes, me. It's great because now you know, but you don't give a damn anymore. <laughs> Things are going to move. They're going to change. They're going to move around. You're going to look in the mirror one day and go, I did not put my butt there. I'm telling my 20-year-olds that now. Uh, I love to brag that I am not a cougar. I am not a cougar. Mostly because I don't want to run that fast. I'm more like an, I'm like an ocelot or a meerkat or a little bit of a prairie dog. I can't run. I like them young, but I'm not going to run that fast. I, I want the low-hanging fruit. I do. I, I didn't mean it that way. Get your mind out of the gutter. I'm in New York. I love it. Yeah, I was dating for a while. I'm not bragging. <laughs> but I was dating two 35-year-olds for a short time. Yes. I mean, not at the same time. Alternating weekends. I had them on a schedule. On a schedule. It was wonderful. And that's like one respectable 70-year-old, isn't it, if you add it together? I don't like old men. I like them young. I don't like old men. They want you to do stuff for them. Like, talk to them. Cook for them. Make them a martini. Crush up their Viagra. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I don't. Young ones are fun. They're easy to please. Like you, you young. How old are you, sir? You're too young for me. Too old for me. 21. That's, 29 is good. Don't be scared. He's, looking, he's a little scared of me. Listen, don't be frightened. It would be fun. Here's what you're going to get. You're going to get Lunchables and lots of them. Lunchables. He's going to love. Listen, young men, they love the Lunchables. It makes them think that they're building things like Legos. Oh, look, look, a piece of salami and a piece of ham. A cracker. This is delicious. It's a Lunchable. They love it. Lunchable. And I'm going to make you really happy right now. You're going to get so happy. You're going to get so happy. <laughs> You, they like you to talk to them like you're the mommy. I'm going to quench your thirst, sir. I'm going to give you a juice box. Yes, I am. A juice box. And again, look at you. You got happy because you're young. You do, they, they look because it gives them something to do. They have to stab it. Like, yeah. Well. It's very refreshing. I'm, I'm going to replace his electrolytes. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, so, like I said, I grew up here in New York, and I was always fascinated with the, uh, the beauty pageants. Do they still have those beauty pageants? Are those, those divas, those heifers, who are those? I don't, I don't trust them. I don't like them. And I've decided to uh, share with you my very first, my own personal uh, uh, a beauty pageant that's in my own mind, anyway. I've got the microphone. You're all here. Let's play. <laughs> uh, I don't have time to do all 50 states. What I will do is the semifinals of the Miss America pageant. You know, the last four or five heifers that come out and do the little interview section? Enjoy. You'll get it. You'll get it. I, actually, I become five or six completely different people. And no, I'm not going to change the hair. <laughs> She's my hat hair. Okay, here we go. 
Good evening and thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Miss Mississippi. Thank you. My name is Kimberly Ann. Kimberly Ann, thank you. Being from the South, you must have a Kimberly and an Ann in your name at all times. Thank you. I would now like to spell my state name. Thank you. M I, a cricket letter, a cricket letter, I, a cricket letter, a cricket letter, I, a humpback, humpback, I. Thank you. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I'm Miss New Jersey over there. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm Linda for Kankatanchi over there. Hey, hey. So I know that I'm going to win this dead contest because I'm freaking beautiful. Plus, my uh, cousin Guido the Rat Skankatanchi had a little talk with the judge. You know what I'm talking about? Cement shoes. All right. And I'm going to go backstage right now and put on my evening gown because I'm feminine like that. <laughs> Plus, I got to go put some cream on this itch. I'll see you later, right? <laughs> All right, how y'all doing? It's like that. How y'all doing? It's like that. I'm from New York. What up? What what? How y'all doing? My name is Shantifernikia Johnson. <laughs> Damn, what y'all looking at? Dang. And, um, I'm from Brooklyn. What up? Brooklyn the house. What, 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 what? And um, I know that I'm going to win this here, their pageant. You know why? You know why? You know why I come? Because I speech very good. I do. I do. And I'm here. And um, I don't like y'all. What y'all looking at? Good evening and thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. I am Susan Lipschitz. Thank you. And I am Miss Long Island. Yes, I am. And I know what you're thinking. Long Island is not a state, but it is a state of, state of mind. Stay with me, kids. Stay with me. As the only Jewish contestant here tonight, I wish to say to you, there has never been a Jewish Miss America. And although the pageant officials have said that I am past my time, I don't think I'm past my time. I think my time is right now. Even though I'm 30, 40, 42, listen, listen, my time is now. Age is just a number. Oh my God, I'm having a hot flash. Thank you so much, you wonderful. Good night. Good night. I will see you. Thank you. Buenas noches and gracias. Gracias. Buenas noches and gracias. I am Miss Florida. Gracias. Gracias. Besos. Gracias. Besos de a mi kisses. Gracias. Gracias. My name is Maria Linda Rosa Rodriguez. Wait, my tongue got in the way. My tongue got in the way. My tongue got in the way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. My name is Maria Linda Rosa Rodriguez de Segrit de Safuan del Punto, del Punto, gracias. Are you Puerto Rican? Are you Dominican? You're none of the above. I love it. Wonderful. Did you know something? For my talent portion of the show, I'm going to get una alligator. Did you know alligator? Alligator, the animal that eats you. I just eat you up. Just. I'm going to get an alligator. I'm going to cut him up and make a new pair of shoes. Gracias. Wait, I forgot to tell you. My mother from Puerto Rico, but my father from Cuba. But Cuba, Puerto Rico, Florida. Same thing, same thing. Right? Gracias, gracias, gracias. 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 We got a fantastic show. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Gotham City Comedy Live. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Joe Brano is taking the stage when we return. First comic coming to the stage right now. This is his television debut. I'm so excited for him, and you will be too. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Joe Prado. Joe Prado. Joe Prado. All right, all right. Let me get this out of the way right up front, so you're not distracted the whole show. Yes, I'm the guy from your emojis. Okay. <laughs> I'm a big drinker, guys. I like to drink. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for the support. <laughs> I'll tell you something I actually learned about drinking this morning. Uh, no matter how much you beg, no matter how much you promise to tip them, they will not put whiskey in your coffee at Starbucks, okay? The guy was a real asshole about it, too. He's like, sir, we don't even have whiskey. And I think you're drunk already. And this is Best Buy. Get out of here. He's like, all right, buddy, you don't need to yell, okay? The guy behind me in line, though, he wanted to be helpful. He's like, hey, man, 
What you want to order is an Irish coffee. I go, what's that? He goes, that's Irish coffee. That's like code for whiskey and coffee. And I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> I think whiskey and coffee together should be called coffee, okay? <laughs> I think if you want coffee straight, and I don't know who the fuck you are, you should be the one that has to order it with some silly name, you know? You should have to go to Starbucks and be like, oh uh, yeah, one venti cafe pussé, please. <laughs> I drink and drive, I'm not afraid to say that, I drink and drive. Thanks. Thank you, Irish people, thank you, that's awesome. I know it's bad, I know you shouldn't drink and drive, but I'm pretty good at it, I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, I got a buddy who gets on my case about it, though. The other day, he was like, Joe, man, you shouldn't be drinking and driving. What if you hit somebody? He looked at me and goes, what if you hit a little kid, bro? Think about that for a second. I was like, hey, Brian, I'm not drinking and driving at noon on a Tuesday through schoolyards, right? <laughs> this is four in the morning after the bar's closed. If I hit a little kid, he's probably up to no good. <laughs> I'm literally doing everybody a favor, taking out the little outlaw. <laughs> What's he doing up at that hour, selling dope? Then guess what? I'm not gonna run him over. I'm gonna buy some dope, guys. Because uh, I smoke pot, too. That's, uh, that's happening. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Great. That's good, yeah. No wonder you guys like this stuff. Uh, I smoke pot and drive. My same buddy the other day, he goes, are you sure you should be operating heavy machinery under the influence of cannabis? I was like, what are you, a warning label? Who calls it cannabis? Who calls it heavy machinery, either? It's a car. I'm not gonna get into an accident because I've been smoking weed because I, I become a better driver when I'm smoking weed, right? Like when I'm not high, I'm all like chilling, you know, rolling through stop times. When I'm high, I'm all like 10 and two, <laughs> stopping and everything. I'm like, is that a cop? Oh, it's a stop sign. <laughs> is that a cop? Oh, it's a squirrel. You gotta calm down. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into an accident because I'm high. I've been playing Mario Kart for 20 years. You know what I mean? Until turtle shells start bouncing around freeways, I'm not getting into an accident. Until the Prius in front of me literally shits a banana peel. I'm not getting into an accident. Halloween's tomorrow, that's a good pothead holiday, right? Yeah, I love Halloween. I love, I love it for the candy, honestly. I just love, I'll eat the shit out of some candy, you know? It sucks though, Halloween's weird because you can't get a regular size Snickers bar again till like January, right? <laughs> they shrink all the candy for Halloween to fun size candy. You know, the little baby ones so the kids don't get diabetes. <laughs> but I'm a pothead. There's nothing fun about having to open 600 Three Musketeers. <laughs> like that's not, that's not fun for me. You know what would be a fun size candy bar for me? A Snickers the size of my leg. That would be a fun size. <laughs> I'd be like, give me some safety goggles and a handsaw. I'm taking down this fun-sized candy bar. <laughs> I, miss, I miss being a kid for Halloween. I, uh, I had two brothers. We were crazy. My mom let us do whatever we wanted for Halloween, just as long as we got the fuck out of the house, you know? That was pretty much her go-to move for parenting. Like, if we would leave, she would let us do it. Like, when I was a kid, my brother used to take advantage of this. He'd get us tickets to R-rated movies just by telling my mom we were going to leave. Like, I saw The Predator. Do you remember the movie Predator? I saw that movie when I was seven years old. Because my brother went up to my mom. He's like, we want to see Predator. She's like, I don't care. Get out. He's like, well, we need you to buy us tickets. She's like, okay, let's go. He was nine. I was seven. I don't know if you guys remember Predator. They skin people alive in Predator. That is not something you send your seven-year-old to. I saw the movie Predator before I knew what the word Predator meant. <laughs> Later that year, I was in science class. They were like, and the shark's natural predators. I was like, these are out there? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> There's something in the woods just going Ch -ch -ch and killing things? That's, no, I'm not. You should have seen my face the first time I heard the phrase sexual predator. I was, I was like, fuck, I'm not leaving the house ever again. <laughs> Like, there's an invisible monster that can seek the heat off of children's buttholes? No, I'm, uh, I'm just going to turn down on that one. I'm not ever going out again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was too far? That was the one you guys are off on? Yeah, well, you're the fucking weirdest crowd ever. All right. Let me do a quick public service announcement for the ladies in the crowd. I see we have a lot of ladies out there. I want to talk to you ladies for a minute. Uh, just cool it on Instagram. Just slow the fuck down, okay? <laughs> not every single thing that you do in life needs 40 pictures of it, okay? 
I was on Instagram this morning. This chick I know posted a picture of her omelet. <laughs> Under that picture, she put 15 hashtags. <laughs> the first hashtag was blessed. <laughs> Second hashtag, so blessed. I was like, what? <laughs> this is not a blessing. You went to a restaurant, ordered an omelet. You're going to pay for that omelet. There's no... That's called going to a restaurant. A blessed omelet would be me waking up tomorrow morning hungover as shit going, man, I would kill for an omelet. If that omelet appeared in my bed, I'd be like, okay, that's photograph worthy. That's a blessed omelet right there. Then she just started describing the omelet. She's like, hashtag omelet. Hashtag Western omelet. Hashtag ham. Hashtag cheese. Hashtag peppers. Hashtag ham, cheese, peppers. I was like, what's happening? I don't even think girls understand hashtags half the time. Like, look, no one's going on your picture and going, hey, let's see what's going on in ham today. I don't even go on Instagram on Thursday, right? Throwback Thursday. Oh my God, throwback Thursday. Look at me at junior prom. Can you believe I did my hair like that? Yeah, I can because you're a fucking idiot, right? Let's call it what it really is, ladies. Look at me when I wasn't fat Thursday, okay? <laughs> And then you girls that are too into yoga, just calm down, okay? I know girls that are crazy about yoga. Oh my God, did a Bikram this morning, did a vinyasa this afternoon, namaste. Uh, just, you can't just say namaste, it doesn't make sense. I think namaste is a made up word. I'm gonna say it right now. I think namaste happened the first time a black guy went to a yoga class, right? You know, class was over, everybody's in that nap pose you get to do. Teacher came over and was like, Daryl, you gotta go, I have another class coming in. He's like, namaste. Guys, that's my time. Thank you for coming out tonight. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Shakira Deal is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Might be the best audience ever. All right, we're gonna keep it going. I got another treat for you. I got another treat for you. Coming to the stage right now uh, is Kieran Deal, who's got a, a, got a, a brand new spot on uh, New Girl. The New Girl's on Fox. I did that all wrong, but we can't redo it because it's live. <laughs> a new, uh, I'm gonna do it right. The next comic coming to the stage will be appearing on an upcoming episode of New Girl on Fox. Please welcome Kieran Deal. I did it right. <laughs> Oh, oh, it was perfect, right? It was perfect. She was perfect. I guess I should start by saying namaste. <laughs> Fuck. You know, Kim Coles, so she's on, uh, she used to be on that show In Living Color. You remember In Living Color? Yeah, amazing, amazing. To give you a sense of where my career is at, uh, I spent 90 minutes on the internet yesterday looking up how to sell my hair to a weave factory. <laughs> Okay? Like, you might have watched the Chris Do Rock documentary as entertainment, but for me, that shit was research. You know, this is 14 to 16 inches of 100% virgin, just go with it, virgin Indian root-to-table organic kale-friendly hair that is worth between 300 to one thousand dollars guys i am walking around with rent money <laughs> on my head you know i might not be able to afford a drink at this bar but i can just go up to the bartender and be like hey girl i'm good for it <laughs> you know i live in los angeles i live in what i would call a questionable neighborhood i actually think that every neighborhood is questionable it's just about the kinds of questions that you ask in your neighborhood <laughs> so i was on the upper east side recently and the questions that i was asking was like why is there a dog in that baby carriage? <laughs> Whereas down by the beach in Venice, the questions are more like, did that bum just refuse leftovers because he's a vegan? <laughs> and in my neighborhood in East Los Angeles, the questions are, why does that nine-year-old have a neck tattoo? <laughs> I'm gonna have to pick up the pace to a brisk walk. 
I knew that the neighborhood was super questionable though when I got home one day and there were just these five guys with like these big guns drawn, just SWAT team style in the house opposite my house. And me and my roommate, we got super excited because we don't have cable. <laughs> So we're looking through the window and the best part of this whole fucking thing is that a little Asian postal worker, she just walks across this entire scene. She opens the mailbox, she puts the mail into the mailbox and all five of these guys were like, what the fuck? And this little Asian postal worker, she was like, I got a job to do. And they were like, LAPD and she was like I'm federal you ain't never gonna shut this shit down all this in front of my window and I just thought that would be like the best commercial for USPS like it's just the 30 seconds of that scene and then it's like the little Asian postal worker and it goes USPS and she's like you're welcome I love that woman because she's like a minority woman. She's taking on the system. She's just taking on the man, you know? <laughs> you know, I just love that. The motto for the postal service is on the outside of the New York City post office, and she reminds me of it. It goes like this. I'm telling you to now, Bridged. It goes, neither rain, nor sleet, nor gloom of night shall stop these winged carriers from their path, which is fucking beautiful. <laughs> That shit is poetry. It would be like the Archangel Gabriel is just gonna like swoop down and deliver you an Ikea catalog. Do you know what the motto for FedEx is? It got there. The motto for UPS is what can Brown do for you? Yeah, which incidentally was also the motto for colonization. Too soon? Is it too soon, New York? Too soon for colonization? I'm just kidding, guys. Colonization did not have a motto. <laughs> it's like subjugating other people. That shit sells itself. You know? It's just true. I like to take it from comedy show to TED Talk. That's, that's kind of the goal. Oh, where'd she go? You know? I, um, I get lonely sometimes living in a big city. Uh, and every time that I get lonely, I have to remind myself that I should never be lonely. I'm a woman. <laughs> Thank you and good night. No, that's not. <laughs> Didn't finish that. Yeah. I want every woman in here to remember this, though. If you take nothing else away from this set, you should never be lonely if you ever feel lonely because you are a fucking woman. So as a woman, just remember this. You can make a person just to hang out with you. <laughs> that's true. It's medical science. And that's actually why I think a lot of women have babies. I think it's just for the company of someone who can't leave you for 18 years. My mom. You know? It's like the older that I get, I'm getting really fascinated. I call this the solar system. This is the solar system of the woman. I'm getting fascinated by like this region in the middle right here. It's just like below the moons and like above like the black hole. It's just this region in the middle because it's like there's so much shit that I personally can't do. It's like I can't like kill a spider and I can't eat Taco Bell without getting diarrhea. But you're telling me that my body can figure out how to put together a human life while I'm watching Duck Dynasty? I mean, that is a miracle. And occasionally people say to me, oh, well, Kieran, I don't think you have it right. You can't do that alone. You're gonna need a few extra ingredients. Like I see the skepticism on your face, sir, with a tan jacket, just call you out for television. Uh, I see this, you know, it's like, but I, it's like, what about the seed? You know what I mean? Like you need a few extra ingredients. A woman can't make the baby alone. You need the seed. To which I would say, I'm pretty sure I stepped on some seed walking into Gotham. <laughs> it is not hard to find any subway stop, any bus station, the lining of any trash can, any red Dixie cup, any party. It's just like, I think if we ran a black light just along these walls, it would just be like, I just didn't know. I just, I imagine there's just like two guys who are like, they're like Banksy splooge dudes. Do you know what I mean? Just like going around everywhere. They're like, hey, yeah, art graffiti. <laughs> like, ah. I'd be a great man, don't you think? I got the basics down. I got the basics down. Um, I'll leave you with this. Um, I'll leave you with this one last little thought. You guys have been lovely. Um, I, uh, I, 
I wanted to tell you, like, in the state of California, in the state of California, it costs about $60,000 a year to keep a person in prison. It's a true statistic. Now, I am a stand-up comedian in the state of California. Okay, so that means that if I went to prison, that would be a $45,000 upgrade <laughs> on my lifestyle. You know? Thank you, guys. on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Paul Odo is taking the stage. We return. It means nothing. I'm not even on camera right now. Hello, and welcome back. Let's keep the show rolling. Let's keep the show rolling with a former winner of the Boston Comedy Festival. He's a winner, and he's here right now. Paul Otto. Paul Otto. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I live here in New York, which is wonderful and terrible depending on the minute. I, um, I, I, en I enjoy being here for the most part, but one of the weird things about living in New York that you don't anticipate when you live here is the certain things that will irritate you uh, that maybe shouldn't. Like, I get really annoyed when people tell me they had a New York moment, because it's usually them trying to engage me in some weird non-versation that I don't want to be a part of. <laughs> And they're gonna to try to tell me how they went to serendipity or they went somewhere and it was just lovely. And it's like, I don't wanna begrudge you, you're fun. Have your fun. But I don't know a New York moment to be some fantastical situation, okay? I, I live here. My idea of a New York moment is something more akin to a rat dying inside the mechanism of my refrigerator. And then me trying to explain that to my landlord who does not speak English. That every time I go to the refrigerator to open it and get, say, a cool drink of water, I'm blasted with the icy scent of death. And, be and because I can't explain it through pantomime rat dead gestures, I have to drag my refrigerator out of my apartment and throw it on the sidewalk. That's what I know to be a New York moment. So I used to think when people said they had a New York moment, it was just a bunch of hooey. And then I saw a bird fly into the side of a woman's head in broad daylight on the island of Manhattan. And now I understand I was wrong because that was a particular New York moment. Particular to here. Now, if you're not impressed by a bird flying into the side of a woman's head, I just have to ask where you died inside. Because that is a gift from the Lord we can all share. Except for her. Screw her. There have to be some sacrifices. But in case you're not impressed by that, maybe you're like, I work at an Avery in Florida and I see that sometimes. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you why this was special. This instance of a bird hitting a lady in the head was special because of her reaction which was nothing. <laughs> she didn't give a shit. And that's special. Let me try to paint the picture for you. So she's walking down the street. Nothing particularly unusual is happening. She's kind of muttering to herself, but not in like a weird way that might attract birds. Just, <laughs> just, so, just sort of a normal angry New York person trying to suppress a boiling, seething rage just beneath the surface. And then here comes the pigeon screaming out of the sky, wobbles, and then it hits her right in the side of the head. There's an explosion of hair and feathers. And this is all she does in response to that happening to her. She just goes like this and kept walking. <laughs> like it happened all the time. And that screwed with me on a level, I don't even know how to process that. I don't know what that means where that's not a big deal to you. When that's not a big deal to you, I don't know what your life is like and it terrifies me. Like, what nightmarish existence do you lead every day where you're just like, I'll just shelve that bird thing because there's definitely more stuff that's going to happen that's weirder and worse than that. Like, what is your day like? Just stealing yourself on this side of your apartment door, just, okay, just touching the doorknob, seeing if it's hot. Okay, uh, all right, here we go. Oh, blow darts, knew that was coming. All right, all right, got to pay rent. That's $9,000. That's a lot to have agreed to pay for a studio that I share with a guy who doesn't own pants. But I guess... That's what you get for going on Craigslist, living in the city of dreams, gonna make it here. But nobody's gonna keep Brenda down. I'm gonna go on that audition, audition and I'm gonna make it on Broadway. You just wait and see. That's probably just another bird. <laughs> probably just another of the dozens of birds that crash into my head on the regular since I moved to this city. 
You know, you don't hear that Jay-Z song. That reminds me, what else is on the to-do list today? Let's see, get Jad out of, Dad out of jail. That's becoming a real thing. Uh, get Gypsy Curse lifted. That's on the to-do. You know, sometimes there's just too much to do in the day that it's hard to keep track. Like, holy Christ. Screw your life, lady. I really felt bad for that woman. And my heart went out to her, but honestly, only so much. Because at the same time, I'm like, hey, lady, I'm li- I got like a half a Gatorade and three hot dogs and a styrofoam igloo cooler. That's my refrigerator. So I can't be out there like, you got to get a net or a tennis racket or just be more aware. Because I can't be out there hitchcocking all those birds for some lady. That's not my lot in life. I don't know. I'm, I love New York, but I miss being elsewhere. I'm... Uh, <laughs> I'm from, I miss home, I'm from Texas uh, originally, uh, Houston, I guess, however you want to call it, Houston. Um, when you tell people you're from Texas, they expect you to have some strong political affiliation, and I don't really have anything like that. I try to kind of stay in the same region where I just listen to things and react um, without just reacting before listening. Uh, but I, I, I feel like if I, did ha- if I did have to choose, like if somebody put a gun to my head and was like, who are you, what side do you want to be like, I'm whatever you are. Uh, which... Let's be honest, it's probably conservative. I, um, but so I don't get to go home as often as I'd like to. I wish I could, uh, but airplanes cost hundreds of dollars to ride on. I have dozens of dollars, so you do, you do the math on that. I did, I did get to go home a couple of times last year. It was really nice. I got to go home. We had a barbecue uh, because family got together, which was lovely. We had a cousin in from out of town who nobody, uh, well, I had never met before. His name's Richard, but he goes by Dick. I've never understand, understood why people do that. I don't know why you would, maybe you didn't understand that that was synonymous with penis when you made that decision with your life. And now you're just like, oh, I guess I'm just a dick. So anyway... <laughs> My grandma hadn't seen this guy in years, and everybody's happy when grandma's happy, and we had a lively time. I came back to New York, Dick went back to Dick Town, or wherever he came from, and, uh, and it was great. And then I got to go back not uh, very long after, and we had another barbecue because procedure. And I'm sitting there at the table, and this is what my grandma says out loud while we're all sitting together as a family. She says, every time I eat ribs, I think about Dick. <laughs> Now everybody kind of did that, but more on the inside. Except my little brother, who's like kicking me, going, do you hear what Grandma said about Dick? Do you hear what Grandma said? She thinks about Dick. And I had to like look at him and be like, no, I hear you, but we're going to let that slide. Because we're not going to crack dick jokes on Grandma at the table while she's alive. Okay? I'm just going to talk about it on national television, and that's how I'll deal with it, baby brother. You find your own ways. You hear Grandma talking about Dick? We're not that family, okay? Make those jokes. I'm going to get out of here, but the one thing I want to tell you guys is uh, New York is a wonderful place. I dog on it occasionally, but I love the things that happen here because they're like all these New York moment things, whatever. My favorite is I was coming out of the subway, and I was going past this dude on the street corner who wasn't homeless, but he was like going that way. <laughs> like dirty suit, a couple of cardboard signs he's written all kinds of nonsense on. And I, and just asking, like, where's the documentation? It's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to get bit. I'm going to keep walking. I got 10 steps past this guy, and this is what I hear yelled at him at this volume. Man, you better summarize that shit. Like, all kinds of... And that's what's beautiful about New York. It checks itself. Because that's the most important thing that that guy could have heard in the day. Just don't, don't try to explain all that bullshit. Just get an editor. You need to trim that nonsense down to an acceptable level that people can consume when they walk past you on the street. Just have a post-it note with a question mark on it. Just be shaking that around. Thank you, guys. Y'all are wonderful. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Giannis Papas is taking the stage when we return. I guarantee you're going to like this guy too. He's hilarious and he's going to be here November 21st and 22nd right here at Gotham. So you can come on back. Come on back and see y'all. <laughs> I'm going to do it right. I, I, I don't like live. I don't like live. <laughs> you're going to come back and you're going to see my new friend Giannis Papas. Don't be mad at me, daddy. Don't be mad at me. Okay. Kim Coles. All right. Giannis Papas. This is a difficult name. I'll respond to anything. Uranus, Yanus, Poopus. <laughs> I'll turn my shoulder. I'm used to it. I'm from New York originally, man. I'm from here. I'm a New Yorker. Brooklyn, New York. 
It's tough when you're from here, because I travel for a living, you know? So like, when I travel, I gotta pretend like I'm impressed with other people's cities. <laughs> so I don't come off like a dick. So I just go to their cities and I'm like, wow, this is your city? This is amazing. This is your downtown area, right here? All four blocks, that's crazy. How does anyone even traverse that? That seems impossible. Is this your skyline right here? Is your little skyline? Your little skyline? The CVS is part of your skyline? Does this building have an antenna with a blinking light on top so nobody flies a kite into it by accident? It's almost like a real city. I was living down in Miami for a year. I just moved back like a month ago. Anyone ever been to Miami? That's a... That's a fun town. Isn't it kind of almost like if New York and Los Angeles had a baby? And then that baby grew up to uh, have a coke problem, it would be Miami. It's a great city, dude. It is a great city to go to if you want to experience like all the wonders of Latin American culture without having to risk getting kidnapped and going to Latin America. You can wear your jewelry, uh, jewelry to dinner and enjoy a cachapa, which is nice. It's a good town. But I realize New York's the best city, and this is how you could realize, this is how you could tell New York's the best city. Based on, as a New Yorker, how you react when you find out you got friends from out of town coming to visit you. Because when you're a New Yorker, you are not happy about that. It's fucking your whole schedule up. You're like, when did you say you were gonna be in town the 22nd to the 2nd? Oh, fuck, really? Oh man, I got no time to look this motherfucker to the Statue of Liberty. I got a lot of fast walking to do, I can't. I gotta go see that independent Croatian movie at the Angelica later. Oh man, maybe his plane will crash or something. It's... But I visited a friend in Wisconsin recently and he could not have been happier to have a house guest. I didn't even call him, he checked my schedule, saw I was gonna be in town and called me. And he was like, I see you're gonna be in Wisconsin. Oh, absolutely you're gonna stay at my house. He actually quit his job to hang out with me. Like, have a whole itinerary plan. It's a lot of fun. So my girlfriend's 24 years old. Yeah, guys are like, woo, girls are like, I wanna hear the rest of this joke before I jump on board. Yeah, I'm in my late 30s, so it's kinda like a babysitting job that I'm paying for. It. Been... Nah, dude, I realize when you date someone that young, you gotta be really careful about how far back you scroll in her Facebook photos. You can really only go two years without it getting weird. <laughs> You're like, wow, that's weird. It was 2011 and I was on my 15th job. And she didn't even have titties yet. That's... I shouldn't have gone back that far. <laughs> I've realized when you date someone that young, you got to pretend in your mind that she just showed up on the planet as an adult. <laughs> I do not want to remember that there was a time that I was listening to Third Eye Blind and she was shitting in a diaper. That happened. <laughs> I was like doing the running man and she was just drooling on her chest. <laughs> Timing is everything, legally. <laughs> now, dude, she's just, you know, it's great. She's almost 25, so we're getting there, you know what I mean? And one day she'll be 30, and I'll trade her in for another 24. You know, just keep it moving. You know, we'll celebrate another 30th birthday. I'll use the same decorations from the last girlfriend. <laughs> now, but she's just new to the planet, man. She's new to the planet. She doesn't know much, you know? Every time we have a conversation, it just ends with her going, I don't know. I bring up a band, she's like, I don't know, don't know. Have you been to Boston? Never, I don't know, I've never been to Boston. I don't know. So it feels less like I'm dating a girl and more like I'm helping a friend get reacquainted with life after a coma or something. I will help you remember. So I was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder as a kid. Is anybody else struggling with the disease out there? Is it hard? Is it hard? You really gotta tip your hat to the pharmaceutical industry that they have invented a mental illness where they diagnose kids as being kids. They're like, this kid is different. Uh, he has trouble focusing. Doesn't wanna do his homework. And likes to run around a lot. We need to prescribe him street name PCP Speed to calm him down. ADD is just a condition of living in the modern world, man. Every time you turn on your TV, there's a new commercial every 30 seconds conditioning you to have short attention spans. You turn on your TV, it's like Usher on an animated rainbow selling you a Twix bar. Like, come on, kids, get this sugar. It's kids' cocaine. Oh. 
What do you wipe your ass with? Is it soft enough? You're like, I don't know. What do I wipe my ass with? Are you bald? I'm like, maybe. Do you have herpes? What is that rash? You just can't concentrate on all the shit wrong with you. Like, I bet you it was really easy to focus in 1837. Some dude started telling a story. You were like, I memorized every word because you're the first person I've seen in a year. So I just appreciate the human contact. I was living down in Miami, man. I realized I'm pro-immigration. They should just open the border up and let every Mexican who wants to come into this country let them in. Hard-working people, willing to do any job. Those are the type of Americans we want, industrious people. The problem to me is not Mexicans coming to this country. The problem is my lazy-ass friend Brad is still here. <laughs> if we can figure out some sort of immigration exchange program. <laughs> it's like, look, you can take this motherfucker. He's 47. All he does is play Call of Duty on the couch every day. I would gladly exchange him for two hardworking Mexicans. I don't even think you need anyone patrolling the border at all. Just have somebody down there with a checklist, checking how much of a loser you are when you want to go on vacation to Mexico. So if it's like some spoiled rich girl from the OC in California or something, she's going down there to Cabo, of course. Just ask her like, ma'am, where are you going? And if she's like, oh my God, I'm going to Cabo. I'm gonna get so fucking wasted. And I got my dad's credit card. We're gonna get real disrespectful. We're gonna do shot, 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 shot. You just go right this way, ma'am. Welcome to Cabo. And then you close the border. You are now Mexican. Rodriguez, a table just opened up for you in Arizona. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, everybody. I'm Giannis Pappas. Thank you. Yeah. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Let's give them a love. Let's give them a love. Let's give them a beautiful people. Let's give them a beautiful people. Good job. Right now.